Johnny Carson was a man who was far from perfect, but the sort of things people found controversial about him would hardly raise eyebrows in today's world. That being said, he still managed to get a rise out of people when he was on the airwaves. Carson would often make jokes at the expense of other stars, and at times his sense of humor would even make him a few enemies. Carson's co-host, Ed McMahon, was by his side for his entire tenure on late night TV. Every night he'd int In the book, McMahon revealed quite a few secrets of Carson's off-screen persona. Keep watching to find out what some of those secrets were and what McMahon really thought about Carson after 46 years of friendship. McMahon dispelled the rumor Carson was cold-hearted. Because of this, Carson developed a reputation for being quite cold. McMahon revealed in his book that the real reason Carson was so socially aloof, Ed described Carson as somewhat of a loner who presented himself better when the cameras were rolling than in person. Ed even recalled a time his friend said he would function a lot better if people had little red lights on their foreheads. Regarding their friendship, McMahon wrote he felt extremely lucky to be one of the people who did have one of those little red lights on his forehead, so to speak, because Carson seemed to connect with him quite well privately. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. And stick around for a lot more about Johnny and Ed McMahon. Carson envied McMahon. Even though Ed referred to himself as Carson's second banana in his book, he did recall a time that his old buddy told him that there was something about him he envied. According to Ed, what Carson envied most was his social skills when the cameras weren't rolling. McMahon said Carson told him he wished he could be more like him. Although Carson could connect with anyone of all ages on his program, at parties he could often be found tucked away by himself doing magic tricks. McMahon also said Carson's least entertaining trick was one where he would make himself disappear. That's one way of getting out of an awkward social situation. Carson and McMahon shared a birthday tradition. Because McMahon and Carson cultivated such a special relationship, he was often able to see a side of his friend he wished the rest of the world was privy to. One of their unique relationship highlights was how the two personalities had a tradition of calling each other on their birthdays. Every year, Carson would have a very special present for his old friend. Not surprisingly, that annual gift was a new joke. McMahon further revealed that Carson would sometimes treat him to a private comedy performance even when it wasn't his birthday. One evening while aboard Carson's yacht, Johnny suddenly felt compelled to deliver a private performance of jokes, impressions, and stories that went on for over an hour and a half. Fittingly, the last time Ed saw Johnny alive was on his best friend's beloved boat. Once again, the two mused and laughed for nearly two hours like old times. Ed once ruined one of Carson's jokes. McMahon wrote in his book that while most of the time he managed to stay in his lane as a good co-host, there was one time he got in Carson's way. In a segment when Carson was demonstrating how to use anti-mosquito spray, he quipped that mosquitoes only ever go after passionate people. Out of pure reflex, McMahon chimed in by slapping his wrist and exclaiming, there's another one. While he thought his response was pretty golden, Carson was mad because he was actually setting the joke up for himself. During the following commercial break, McMahon apologized for ruining Johnny's joke. Carson responded by saying he'd be able to joke all he wanted at his new job at a Chevrolet dealership. Even though Carson was clearly joking, McMahon learned pretty quickly his job wasn't to be the funny one. Johnny only wanted him around to laugh at his jokes, not beat him to the punchline. McMahon said it was challenging to be Carson's co-host. After the mosquito incident, McMahon became a lot more careful about sharing his humor on The Tonight Show. For the most part, he knew when to talk and knew when it was time to keep his mouth shut. But sometimes, staying quiet wasn't the easiest thing to do. McMahon said being Carson's sidekick was a very challenging role. Since he previously had his own shows, there were numerous times when Ed had to consciously stop himself from responding to something Johnny had said. He had to learn how to assist him without getting in his way. Learning when to be there when he was needed and when to take a step back when he wasn't, learning that was never an easy task. On one occasion, a teen fan even told Ed he could be replaced by a laugh track. He replied to that snarky comment saying he was lucky then because a laugh track wouldn't have been able to spell Alpo, one of the program's memorable sponsors. Johnny Carson's Many Failed Marriages Carson had a reputation for being disrespectful and cruel to the people around him. One of the worst displays of his cruelty was when he was on a honeymoon with his new wife and publicly humiliated her. 
The year was 1987 and Carson had just tied the knot with his fourth wife, Alexis Moss. The couple went to Italy for a honeymoon excursion on a yacht. Carson was apparently in a very sour mood and ended up taking it out on his new wife. After Moss made a minor complaint, he told her in front of a crowd of other people that if she said something like that again, their marriage wouldn't last another three weeks. Despite that outburst, however, Moss and Carson remained married until his death in 2005. Carson's first marriage was to a woman named Jody Walcott. They wed in 1949, but their marriage was very volatile, with both parties committing acts of infidelity. They divorced in 1963. He then married Joanne Copeland the same year he finalized his first divorce. He and Copeland divorced in 1972. Copeland received $6,000 a month in alimony until she either remarried or Carson died. She ended up receiving these payments until Carson's death. On September 30th, 1972, at a Tonight Show 10th anniversary party, Johnny announced he and former model Joanna Holland had secretly gotten married earlier that afternoon, much to the shock of his friends and colleagues. Eleven years later, Holland filed for divorce. She received $20 million in property and cash. McMahon and Carson had worked together previously. Even though they would be best remembered for their work together on The Tonight Show, Ed and Johnny first got a chance to work with each other on the ABC game show Who Do You Trust, which ran from 1957 to 62. Later in his career, McMahon also hosted the original incarnation of Star Search from 1983 to 95. From 1982 to 1988, he co-hosted the show TV's Bloopers and Practical Jokes with Dick Clark. You might also remember him for his work presenting sweepstakes for the direct marketing company American Family Publishers. And from 1973 to 2008, he anchored and co-hosted the Jerry Lewis MDA Telethon. 